Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Cheryl. Thank you very much for joining me. If you are a new viewer, hi! And, and welcome. <laughs> and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you very much for coming and spending some time with me. I have a mug that says, what does it say? Happy pumpkin spice latte season. Because it's still winter out. I have snow. There's snow. I live in Canada. What can I say? We didn't get snow until basically January. We got a little bit of snow before that, but hardly any. And then the end of December, beginning of January, big dump of it. So, at least where I live in BC, it didn't snow much. But um, now it's starting to to melt and not get as much, but we still have a little bit of snow. So. <laughs> Um, I love snow. I love winter, so I enjoy it. I don't like the ice, but I like winter. I like being cold and snuggling up in my blanket, making a return visit. It always seems to come on my videos because I love this blanket. A friend of mine gave it to me. It's like huge, huge duvet cover, and I love it. It's so comfortable, and I cuddle up in it during the cold days. Like I wrap myself in it, basically, and it keeps me nice and warm because I can't afford heat, so... Because hydro is very expensive these days, um, at least in BC it is. So, um, I don't put on heat during the winter, so I like to cuddle up in this blanket. <laughs> Anyways, that was a long rant. Happy pumpkin spice latte season. I got this from, I think I got it from a dollar store. So, I am drinking tea. If you just, if you saw my, um, I just filmed a unboxing of the 24 days of tea from David's Tea, and um, I'm drinking, what am I drinking? Let It Snow, which is a spicy eggnog. When I first tasted it, didn't taste like eggnog to me, but after the second sip, it really did. And the only thing is, it's giving me the cramps, which I don't know why. So, um, sometimes tea does that to me. I get the cramps from it. So I'm hoping it's just me just the way I am and not the tea because I really enjoy the tea but after the second sip it does taste like eggnog so I enjoy it I love eggnog and eggnog gives me cramps too so it doesn't I mean it doesn't really surprise me if this does but it is very good I did try the hot chocolate tea and oh my goodness it is del I'm like leaning on the side sorry it is gore it it's just gorgeous. It's delicious. It's such good tea. I'm so glad because I ordered some more because I knew I'd like it. I ordered some a few days ago, a, like a 15 to 20 cup package. I'm so excited to get that in a few days. So I loved it. Totally recommend it. The hot chocolate tea from David's Tea. Love it. Anyways, this is a knitting and primarily knitting and crocheting channel, but I do do other crafts. So, um, how are you all doing? Are you doing good? I've been, I haven't been doing a lot of knitting and crocheting lately. Um, I just started back again doing them about, uh, three days ago, maybe a week ago, maybe at the most. I haven't been doing a lot of it. Um, to be honest, I've been working on my book. I'm writing a book, so I've been working on that a lot and I've been reading a lot as well. But I do have some finished objects. So these didn't take long to make, but, um... We'll get into the finished objects first. So first I did my dishcloths because I like making dishcloths. So this is from Knit, um, Knit Picks Dishy, this yarn. And I made that, can you see it? Yeah, I made that. Now this is the pattern by PJ Allen. I will link it below in the description box below. I used the one with the holes here but um, you can do it without holes as well, which I have done and I like as well. What I don't like about this pattern is it makes it go in like a, a corner. So you kind of have to make it a little bit more rounded, which is no big deal, but I like it. I made that. This one I'm not sure if I showed last time or not, but this was made out of the cotton yarn I buy from the uh, Walmart here, and I don't remember what kind of cotton it is. Um, I think it's Bernat's, is that right? I'm not sure. It's not sugar and cream, because we don't have that at my Walmart, which I wish we did. I think it's Bernat cotton, but 
that one. This one, I did not do the holes on the edges, which are just, um, the holes are made by a, a yarn over and knit two together. This one, I just did a, um, it's a free pattern. So this one, I just did a knit forward and back to make the extra stitch. So yeah. Then another dish cloth. Um, this is another green one, but this one, I did not do the holes. I don't think. No, I don't think I did. It's hard to tell. Now this one, it does have a couple holes in it where I must have slipped a stitch, but yeah, that looks good. I love this color. I don't know what colorway this is, but it's from Knit Picks Dishy. It's the new yarn they have, the new dish yarn. So I think I uploaded a video where I got those if you want to check it out. If not, I'll upload it, but I got some of them. Um, then I found some yarn at, um, oh, I didn't bring it with me. I found some yarn from Walmart and I was going to get some scrubby yarn to make some scrubbies because my friend Liz makes scrubbies and she crochets them and she, and they're really nice for washing dishes. They're really great. She gave me some for Christmas and I love them. So I went to buy some scrubby yarn, but I bought the wrong kind. I bought the kind that is both cotton and scrubby. So I made this. I'm not sure if I showed this yet or not, but see how this is cotton and this is scrubby. But I kind of like them. I like the dishcloths like this. I think they're cool. So I'm hoping to sell some dishcloths. I'm going to be making a bunch of them. I'm hopefully doing the night market in May, so um, which is a Friday night homey market thing that we do in our town. So I'm hoping to sell a bunch of this. I'm also hoping to sell, oh, I made another one too. This one's a yellow one. Making dish possible. Okay, so another thing I'm hoping to sell, She, my friend Liz is, help, is doing the market with me and she is making baby booties. I decided, you know, spring, there is a lot of babies being born in spring and summer. Now, I know my brother, he was like, Cheryl, there's lots of babies born all the time. Like, I know. But <laughs> there tends to be a lot of babies born in spring and summer just because I think it's because um, for teachers especially, they get the summer off. So that's when they plan their maternity ward, not maternity ward, maternity leave. So if you're a teacher, most teachers plan for the baby to be born in summer. So... That's where I'm going. So I loom knitted. Now this, the, the, the ends aren't woven in it. Words are hard today, people. So I didn't weave it. <laughs> I didn't weave in the ends yet, but this is a little baby hat. Now this would fit, I think, um, a newborn. This would fit a, as far as I can tell from the circumference chart out on, um, um, oh, what's her website? Um, Lumahat, lumahat.com. This is where I got the pattern from. Um, she also has a YouTube channel. Um, Kristen, I think is her name. Uh, she has a circumference thing for baby hats. So this one, she says, will fit a six to eight pound or eight to 10 pound baby. I can't remember, six to eight pound, I think is what it is. So I don't know, I don't know, I babysit, but I don't know how big heads of little newborns are, but I'm gonna make some preemie ones as well. And this is just really cute. So this is loom knitted on a 24 stitch, 24 peg loom. And uh, I'm thinking of trying to make some pom poms and put it on top, but I don't know how to make pom poms. I tried and I'm not very good at it. So I would love to put some pom poms on there though. Who knows? I might try. Isn't that cute? And then I made um I cr I made another one, a white one. So again the ends aren't woven in yet, but there's that one. You can make them with brims too, or you could just like fold it up like that. So yeah. I'm gonna make some bigger ones too. Then 
yes, I made those yesterday, and yesterday morning I decided to make a teddy bear hat, so I crocheted one, and I found this really good pattern. Um, I don't remember where I found it online, but I will try and link it below for you. Now, this didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to because the ears are kind of off of it. Which way is this way? So, I made this little teddy bear hat. Isn't that cute? That is so cute. This was so easy to make. So easy to make. So, now, they say this is for newborn. Now, I did make it one. They said to use a 4.5 millimeter for worsted weight. I used a 5 millimeter because I couldn't find my 4.5 millimeter. So I used a five millimeter, so I think that's why it's a bit bigger, but this is definitely not a newborn size. Like that is definitely not a newborn size. Um, to me, that's more of a six month old, I would think. I don't know, what do you guys think? I don't know, it's like that. So I think probably a six month old or more because it's stretchy, right? So I don't know, but it's really cute. I'm gonna make more of these as well. So, um, I think I'll use a smaller needle or a smaller hook though, because I don't like the big holes, but for a first try, that's not too bad. And the ears are kind of off. This one looks perfect. This one is kind of not positioned right. So it looks kind of weird compared to this one, but I'm like way over here looking at this, but yeah, um, this one, I just didn't position right or sew in right. This one I think is perfect, but really really easy pattern i found it on just by googling it and so i will link it below for you but it's really cute lastly this is the last thing i've done um i wanted something uh, about five days ago i wanted to crochet something really easy um because i just wanted to mind this project i felt like crocheting i didn't feel like knitting so I started making squares, and I didn't want to make the normal granny square. I wanted to make something else, but something really simple. So I found this pattern on Ravelry. I will link it below, but it is, forget what they called it, a circle square, I think. And I don't remember who designed it, but again, I'll link it below. It's a free pattern. And I decided to make some. So I decided I wanted them all to have black on the borders. So again, they're not woven in, but it's just a circle with square on it. That hence the name circle squares. <laughs> but I love it. I think they'll make a beautiful blanket. I'm just making a bunch of different colors and I'm just gonna put them together. So this took literally, this takes like five or 10 minutes to make. I mean, it takes me about 10 minutes, but if you're a fast crocheter, it would take five minutes or less. I mean, it's really easy. Um, I don't remember the size hook I used. Oh, that's awful. Um, I think, I think I probably used a five millimeter. I would think maybe a 5.5. I think I used whatever the pattern said to use. So I don't remember what that is. I should really write these things down so I can remember. This one I think is really pretty. Isn't that pretty? I love that. So I'm just using my scrap yarn. Then I have some black yarn that I got that I don't even know what brand it is, where I got it. I assume I got it from Walmart. I don't remember. This actually looks like one that my stepmom gave me. I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's just black worsted weight yarn. And I'm using scrap yarn for the circles. So this is Burnett Premium. This one is Burnett Premium too. Most of them are gonna be Burnett Premium. It's my favorite yarn. Then I have this one. Again, the ends aren't woven in, you know me. I started connecting them to see how it would look. I don't like how I connected it, so I'm gonna have to see better ways to connect it. But I did that. So this is a purple, it looks more whitish blue there, but it's a purple. And um, I don't like how I connected it. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. All I did was a whip stitch and I just don't like it. Plus I didn't do this part, so. It's got a hole in it right there. If you have any idea, if you have like a suggestion of how to connect these, like I'm thinking of 
like taking some black yarn and then tying a knot and then crocheting them together, like slip stitching or crocheting them together, like the single crochet. I don't know. I might try that. But um, I'm just going to make squares for now. I want to make this a huge blanket. So I want to make about probably 400 of these. <laughs> I don't know. A whole bunch. So, um, yeah. Those are nice. So that's just an easy little mindless thing. I have been knitting on my dad's squares too. I haven't done a lot, which I do have to work more harder on that. I do need to get those done. Um, I've been working a lot on dishcloths and things that, and baby hats to sell. Um, and when I do have time to knit and crochet, it's when I do it. I usually write or read these days, so I don't have a lot of time for knitting or crocheting. I have to make more time for it, but um, yeah, that's all my finished objects, and that's all my whips because I really don't have anything. I mean, I'm in the middle of a dishcloth again. I think I'm in the middle of two dishcloths, and that's it. So that's it. As far as reading goes, I did finish The Starless Sea by Erin Morganson. Um, I did not, I don't have it here with me because um it was due back the library that book shook me like i don't know how i rated it four stars couldn't quite give it five stars just because it kind of confused me <laughs> maybe i'm just not that smart i don't know but it it was a confusing book it's not a light read let's just say it that way nobody who read it as ever said it is a light read <laughs> it's not a light easy read um it's a fantasy book and it uh oh my goodness it's it's a oh, i don't even know how to describe it it's a book in a book it's a book about a book and it's just oh my goodness um when it ended i did not know how to feel about it i was like how, how could it end this way i don't know but if you like fantasy if you like books and cats you'll probably love this book if you like fantasy. If you don't, you may not like it. There's a lot of mention of metaphors and things like that um, that kind of confuse me. I'm, I'm not that big on metaphors and similes and stuff like that. I know what they are. I, you know, I, was, I went to school. I know what they are. But I get confused on them sometimes just because when I read, I just want to read a book. I don't want to learn about things. I want to read. And some of her metaphors especially just kind of confused me. But it's a really good book. It's beautifully written. Her writing, oh my goodness, I would read any book from her just because of her writing. Her writing is gorgeous. It is beautiful. I love words. I'm the kind of person who loves words. So, I mean, I can literally go through a dictionary and just love looking at a dictionary. I'm, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> So her writing was absolutely gorgeous. And I was reading it going, wow, that is a good sentence. Like I would stop and I would just like, wow, that was a really good sentence or that was a really good word, you know, and, and it's just, it's beautifully written. So I finished that book and I started reading her first book, which her debut novel was The Night Circus. And her name is Erin Morganson. Um, that's her in the back there. This book is another fantasy book. Um, I'm loving it. Again, beautiful writing. I'm not as confused with this book. But I'm not saying I won't be because she just writes those kinds of books. But um, it is beautiful. I will read anything she writes, basically. I, I'm pretty sure I will. Just because her writing is just so gorgeous. So if you appreciate good writing, like if you appreciate beautiful writing, you will like these books. So The Starless Sea is her newest book. It was came out in 2019, I believe. This book came out in 2014, I think. Let's see. Hold on. I got this from the library again, but I want to buy both the books. I want to buy so many books, it's ridiculous. If I ever sell my book to a publisher, the first thing I'm going to do is buy another bookshelf and buy a bunch of books. Because I have so many books I want to buy. It's ridiculous. Let's see. Oh my goodness, where is, here it is. 
So it was published in, where does it say? Here we go, 2012, sorry, 2012. Love that it opens up like that. Isn't that gorgeous? So this book is about a night circus. It's about a circus that opens at night. It's about, a, it's a love story. Um, I'm, I'm only, how far am I into it? I'm only 87 pages into it. Loving it. Um, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not very good at describing books, and her books especially are very hard to describe for me. But it's really good. So, recommend her, Erin Morganson. And it's YA, and the Stroud sees YA as well, I believe. I think it's a YA. Not sure. It might be a new adult, but I think it's YA. So, as far as my writing is going, um, if you're interested... I need a cup, I need a sip of tea here. Hold on. Oh, I like that cold. That tastes good cold. I like that cold. That'll be perfect to make with ice cubes and make it into an iced tea in the middle of summer. Perfect. I love that. Anyways, which I'm planning on doing this summer because I don't want to drink a lot of Diet Coke like I used to. And I don't want to drink ice caps and milkshakes and stuff like that because I'm on a new diet, which I will talk to you soon about. But um, I think iced tea would be good with the flavored teas. Really excited about that. Anyways, back to what I was saying. My writing is going really good. I found the book I want to write, which I'm very excited about. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to my author booktube channel, which is um, author Cheryl Gilmore. And you can go there and subscribe to my channel if you would like and uh, learn more about the book. But basically, um, it's a mystery book, a murder mystery. And I came up with the idea while talking to my friend Liz she told me about a boy she used to babysit in the 80s who killed someone when he was 10 years old um during the time that she was babysitting him not it the murder didn't happen while she was babysitting him but during that year that she babysat him and uh, she was wondering what happened to him so we did a bunch of googling and couldn't find his case anywhere couldn't find anything about it so she did contact her old law professor who studied, who talked to her about the case. Um, they lived in a small town and uh, she contacted him and sent him a snail mail. So hopefully he'll return the mail and let her know um, if he knows anything about what happened to the boy. Because she thought, she never suspected he would ever kill someone. He killed a five-year-old girl and he was 10 years old. And you you tend to think when that happens did they grow up to be a criminal did they change did they get help if they had mental illness did they get help um what happened exactly like why did he snap why did he do this he was a great kid she thought he was a wonderful kid never gave her problems so that got me thinking so then i started um coming up with a book idea so it's about a 40 year old man 41 year old man who, when he was, I'm not sure at the age, whether it's going to be 10 or 12, um, I have to find out what, what happens when you're 10 years old and you murder someone in Canada, in BC, because the only information I can find is when you're 12, so I might change him to 12 years old. But anyways, research is for later <laughs> when i'm editing i use placeholders so i put on it in parentheses and in highlight i put um find out this or research this or whatever and then i keep writing so what i'm doing i i um so okay anyways the book is about the premise is he goes back to his hometown with his old babysitter and they try to solve um a murder that happened that is a lot like the murder he did and um, he's, he says he's moved on, he's changed man, but he's still internally trying to deal with the fact that he killed someone. And um, he's, he has to forgive himself and then also solve a murder. So that's the premise. Um, I've I got an account on Scrivener and I'm writing scenes as like just little scenes because you can put the different scenes and then move them around to make a story and then compile it to make it a whole manuscript. 
So I'm writing the scenes I feel like writing that day and I'm, what I come up with in my head, I'll write it down and I'm really enjoying it. I'm finding, I'm loving writing it. It's a, an emotional read as well as a mystery, as well as a murder mystery. It's not really suspenseful. It's just more of the question, can someone change? Someone who did this horrific thing as a child, can they change and become a substantial part of the community? And my answer to that is definitely they can. But, um, and that's the way I'm perceiving it in the book. I'm presenting it. He, uh, he did get help through his childhood and youthhood and uh, young adulthood, and he changed. So um, there's going to be, he goes back to his hometown to solve the murder. So there's going to be a lot of people who are still not ready to forgive him and move on. So it's, it's really good. I'm sorry about the glare on my glasses. My goodness, I have to wear glasses. So. <laughs> Anyways, I'm enjoying writing that. And um, yeah, I, I've written about 4,253 words, I think. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm hoping to get up to 5,000 today altogether. I do have to clean my house quite a bit today because my manager of the building is coming over to look at my hot water tank. I don't know why, but apparently he has to look at it. Maybe it's due to be looked at. I don't know. It's not causing me any problems, so I don't know. But I do have to clean out the closet that has the hot water tank and so that he can get to it. <laughs> that would help. And I also want to clean up part of my house as well so that he doesn't freak out when he sees it. <laughs> it's pretty messy, so got to do that today. But I also want to write about probably about 800 words today, and I want to read some. I want to do some crochet. It's already, what time is it? It's probably around 2 o'clock today, so yeah. Okay, that is it. I do love this little teddy bear hat. Isn't it cute? It is so cute. It's just double crochet and half double crochet for the ears. Love it. Okay, that is it. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to check out my other channel, Author Cheryl Gilmore, and remember to give me a thumbs up as it does help the uh, get, help my videos get shown in other people's recommended feeds. Thank you very much. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you feel like you want to, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> All right, have a great day. God bless you know how you do. Bye, guys.